Welcome to module 1.3. In this lesson, we will understand measurements, we'll look at adding dimensions, and also printing views. So continuing on from session 1.2, we might have our model open, or we can proceed to open up the technical school again. Once again, of course, it will be in the recent file list. We're going to begin by taking a look at adding some measurements. And here in the project browser, let's go ahead and locate the sections folder. And then we're going to open up section through main stair. If I open this view up, we can see here that we have some grids shown on the top of the structure. First, I'm going to take some measurements across these grids just to check some dimensions. The measurements we add on are temporary items just to confirm and check lengths and angles. Up on the quick access toolbar, you'll note there are two options. We can measure between two references or measure along an entire element. Let's begin by measuring two references. So here you'll note that we have our snaps operational and I'm going to snap to the end point of this grid here and the end point of this grid here. And you can see then we have a dimension. Again, I could place another measurement across these two grids here. I might also want to check the ceiling height so I can take a measurement from the finished floor level up to the underside of the ceiling. And you can see we've got 2,600. Now in here, I might also want to check the space I might have to uh, fit some framing in. So again, I can take a measurement from the underside of the concrete frame to the ceiling and I can see that I have 1,148. With this tool, we can also measure angles. So if I zoom out, you'll notice here that we have a skylight. And if I wanted to just check the angle of this glazed object here, I can pick two points along that glazing element. And you can see an angle in this case of 15 degrees is returned. Of course, if I measure in the opposite direction, I'll get the reciprocal angle, which in this case is 165. So let's now look at measure along an element. If I go ahead and select measure along an element, in this case, I might want to measure an entire wall. So you can see here, I can move across a basic wall or perhaps some of these walls that don't physically go from floor to floor. So for example, if I measure this partition panel here, I can get an understanding of the measurement from the finished floor level up to the concrete slab. And in this case, you can see that I've got 3,535. If I pick this partition panel here, again, you can see that I have, in this case, got 3,800. So let's measure along an element. Again, quite useful, particularly if we're in plan and we want to measure walls, beams, and framing. Now, of course, all of these tools are just simply giving me temporary measurements. If I want permanent dimensions that I can then print out later on, I can use the dimension tool. The best way to see all the dimensions is to select the annotate ribbon. And you'll note here, we have our dimension panel. On a dimension panel, you can see that I have aligned dimensions, linear, angular, as well as tools to measure radius, diameter, and arc lengths. Another very useful tool here is the ability to put down spot elevations. So for example, I'll be able to find the level on the underside of slab, or perhaps on any of these levels here, or in fact, place spot coordinates to understand the easting, northing, and level of a particular element. Let's begin by taking a look at the aligned dimension tool. Now, what this means is it's aligned to the elements I pick. So if I want to go ahead and put some dimensions down across these grids here, I would select aligned, and then I can simply pick my references, which are the elements themselves, like this, I'm deliberately going to miss out grid E and go directly to F. And when I'm ready to place these dimensions down, I want to pick in spare space. If I go ahead and select one of these elements again, you'll see it deselects it from the selection set. So of course I need to pick grid F and then pick in spare space somewhere here to position those dimensions. I can then press escape or select modify to release the command. Now, if I decide here that I wanted to add grid E into that dimension set, I can select the set of dimensions, right mouse click, and here I can edit the witness line. 
When I'm doing this, I can then go ahead and select any references that I may have missed. And it doesn't just have to be grids. For example, here, I might want to also recover this wall position. So again, I can select that, and you'll now notice that reference is added in. To complete the command, once again, I pick in spare space. And you can now see those dimensions are placed down. Once again, to deselect them, we can select modify, or we can press escape. And I can now see those dimensions are added in. If you wanted to check the angle of this glazing here, we could go ahead and select angular. And I can pick the two references. So I can pick the roof and I can pick the underside here. And then I can go ahead and place out my dimension. And you'll see here that we have the various different quadrants of that angular dimension where I could display that. And of course, don't forget that if we want to change the scale of the view, we can simply come down to the scale here on the view control toolbar. And perhaps, in fact, here I might want to change this to 1 to 50. And of course, you'll notice that all the annotation automatically updates. OK, let's return back to 1 to 100. So now that we have a few dimensions across some of these key areas here, we might want to simply print a view. So here I'm going to zoom up on this view and I'm just going to do a check print. So I'm not really interested in having a title block here. I just want to print this view perhaps to a PDF or simply as a hard copy. So to do this, again, on the quick access toolbar, you'll note here I have print. If I select print, you'll notice here that we can select our physical printer or perhaps a PDF driver. We can then determine where we want to store our PDF. And you'll see here that we have various different settings for the print range. So I could print the current window, a visible portion of the current window, or a selected view or sheet. So we'll come back to this later when we want to print an entire sheet. But in this case, I'm just going to print off a visible portion of this current view. So here I can select preview and you can see the view that I'm about to print. And of course you can see up the top here, I could then commit to a print and that would then go ahead and save a PDF. If I go back to print and I want to actually configure things like the paper size and so on, you can see here that we have the setup of our printer. So of course, if I select setup, in here, I can determine the paper size. So in fact, here, if I was printing to PDF, I might just want a simple A4 print or perhaps an A3 print in here. I've got landscape selected. In here, I'm scaling to fit. But of course, if the actual sheet size was A3 and I wanted to be scaling off of the sheet, I would zoom to 100%. But of course, in this case, um, I'm not going to scale off the drawing because I've obviously added dimensions for those key elements. So here, I just want to make sure it's centered and fit to page. And of course, once all that's set up, I can just again select preview and I could then print that out. If we take a look at some actual drawings, if I scroll down here, you can see that I've got sheets. For example, here, I might want to now print off the A1 floor plan. So I can double click this view to open it up. Here's my sheet. Now this is an A1 sheet, as you can see here, but I might just want to scale this to fit on an A3. So again, I can select print. It should have remembered all my previous settings, so I can go to setup just to confirm this. And you'll notice, yes, I'm printing to a PDF. I have A3, we're going to center the print. It's gonna to scale to fit. And I have landscape selected. So of course here, now I could just hit preview. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to print perhaps two sheets. So I could select uh, selected view sheets. I can click the select button. Here, I just want to see the sheets themselves rather than all the views in the project. So I can just uncheck views. And here I could actually pick the two sheets that I want to print. Revit prompts me to save this for a future session. Um, I don't want to save this, so I'm just going to say no. And then, of course, I could go ahead and print these out. OK, and you'll now see that Revit then starts to spawn out those two PDF files. OK, I can then open up the PDF file and you can now see that we have an A3 copy displaying the full drawing.
And here's the second sheet. So Revit's automatically printed each of those sheets to separate PDF files. There's also an option to print these to a combined single PDF file if required. OK, so that concludes our training for Module 1. So these are the essential skills required to navigate around a Revit project, open a project up, take some measurements, understand the interface and produce some prints. I look forward to seeing you in Module 2.